The Polar Vortex is set to arrive next week. We take a look at the overall stratosphere. Currently, we are getting confirmation this afternoon of the polar vortex splitting in the upper levels of the atmosphere. You can see these polar lobes get completely separated from each other. That is going to send very cold air down into the lower 48 and likely easily the coldest air mass of the season is still yet to come. So if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and you're in to get all my daily content on this channel. And I would love to reach 260,000 subscribers by the end of the month. And you can help me get there by subscribing to the channel and following all my daily content. So here's the first Arctic blast, because I think there's going to be three of them. One of them came in yesterday, and here's the residual effect with the much colder anomalies still in play. These are afternoon high temperatures, folks. So we've got single digits to the north, you know, essentially teens across areas of Kansas, 20s in Oklahoma, 30s there in Texas. So you know that's a colder shot of air. They're still warmer anomalies trying to hang on until the southeast where they had those severe storms yesterday. Unfortunately, we're going to have yet another system impact the same areas again on Saturday. But all eyes are out west this afternoon because we've got a deluge of moisture just funneling in off the west coast. This is our atmospheric river event that is pummeling you know, most of California with heavy rainfall, easily one to three inches of heavy rainfall. In fact, that spread into Nevada, even in Las Vegas, they actually ended their drought, long time streak. I think it was like 214 days without precipital you know, water. Finally, they ended that streak with much needed rain falling for them. That, that system is going to be moving across and set up a pretty dynamic trough across the middle part of the country. That's going to do two things. First, it's going to pull down yet another surge of Arctic air. And then also, it's also going to create a little bit of a horseshoe effect in the jet stream. And as it does, it's going to tap into some of this warm sector down here again into the southeast. That should really amplify this area to produce more flooding rains. And unfortunately, there's going to be a lot of shear, a lot of uh, a lot of intense uh, wind velocity at the surface that could produce more tornadoes down there in this region and could be a much more significant event than what y'all saw just yesterday so here's the setup on the temperature anomalies as we go into saturday afternoon you've got your much warmer air mass further to the south so this is well above average temperatures you got dew points approaching into the 70s a really soupy air mass but it's completely the opposite to the north of course that pink there is well below 30 below zero and that arctic air the second piece of arctic air is pushing down into the lower 48 with a reinforced shot of colder air and then the third one that comes in early next week is easily going to be the coldest air mass of the season but for first and foremost we've got to get through the weekend and for the weekend on saturday we've got a huge significant severe weather threat unfolding and this could easily be upgraded to a moderate risk it's a fairly intense setup a widespread setup i think it originates into east texas into the afternoon on saturday but really amplifies heading into the later afternoon early evening in the shreveport region down to lake charles again in the jackson mississippi region up here into birmingham swing further south into mobile back into new orleans and then lift northeast bound into Memphis, Huntsville, those areas into Atlanta, actually approaching all the way up into the Nashville region, even into portions of Kentucky as a widespread severe weather setup. So that will likely produce heavier range. You can see this green banding here. That is always a, you know, a, a favored area for one to two inches of heavy rainfall with the darker greens associated with it. And then whenever those isolated supercells are going to become discrete, that's where we got to have to have concern of some of that larger hail, definitely some damaging winds, and unfortunately, some tornadic activity 
for the southeast, but to the north of there, in that, you know, north of that freeze line, it's going to be all snow tapping into that reinforcing shot of colder air coming down from Canada. So we should start to see more snow flying heading into Saturday night, going back into Missouri, back into Illinois again, into Indiana, as well as into Michigan. And that will likely swing into Quebec and then swing over into upstate New York. And then more of a chillier rain for you guys in Virginia, West Virginia, and most areas into Ohio. And then on, on the backside of the system, you will transfer from that rain to the snow on the backside of the system in Michigan, back into Indiana, as well as Ohio. And then be more of a chillier rain, maybe an icy mix mi mixture there in Pennsylvania. And then all snow as you get up into Vermont, New Hampshire, and of course, in the warmer sector, we've got to be dealing with the heavier rains. And there's the middle of the country with the uh, drier slot back behind that Arctic air mass. And as we move through heading into next week, this is a telltale sign. The polar vortex is definitely coming. This is the Arctic oscillation. And wow, this is a massive dip, folks. This basically takes it off the charts right after valentine's day that's a signal this this air mass is coming straight from the arctic and is heading all the way down to mexico with nothing to stop it in its path and it's likely going to bring the easily the coldest temperature so far this season so the setup going into next week, this is your February 17th time frame. This is your pressures. You're down to a 1047 Arctic high pressure coming out of Canada here. So you've got three Arctic fronts. You got the one came in yesterday. You've got the one coming in on Saturday night. And you got the reinforcing, the strongest shot coming in on Tuesday. So by Tuesday, easily this is going to be at least in the center part of the country the coldest temperatures you've seen this this winter so looking at this if you take the average mean this is february the 17th through the 21st those five days folks if you take the average high and the average low and you combine them over those five days this is what you get i mean this is really cold folks this is 20 and 30 below average comparatively what you typically are this time of year over a five-day span so yes this is definitely cold across a good part of the central u.s all the way down into the deep south swinging over portions of the southeast so eventually after saturday this southeast ridge is going to go bye-bye coming in with that arctic air but easily the coldest anomalies will likely be in the heart of the country there into the kansas region nebraska iowa back into missouri with these temperatures well below zero so let's break down some of those temperatures going into wednesday morning so this is your tuesday night wednesday morning this will be our next significant system these are actual temperatures folks yes that's not a misprint that is 30 below zero up there in the dakotas we've got 20 below in Can nebraska 13 below in kansas below zero there in oklahoma and yes, that's even single digits there in North Texas. This is the real deal, folks. A significant cold blast is on the way. Complements of that polar vortex splitting is essentially taking a piece of the Arctic and then sending it down through the mid latitudes and pushing it in to the lower 48. And yeah, easily the coldest temperatures you know, of the season, and then it will bring some wintery precipitation. So yes, uh, Arctic air is definitely a drier air, but there's also a little short wave coming in on the back side of it and yes even though we've got a 1048 arctic high pressure and these temperatures are likely below zero here as the temperatures continue to plummet we'll have a, a really fluffy snow falling in there in kansas the transition to snow there in oklahoma arctic air this is a deep shallow cold air mass this is very very shallow and there's also going to be a warmer air aloft. So there's definitely going to be a transitional zone where it could be raining at times into the Oklahoma region in 20 degrees, folks. This is what we're dealing with. Yeah, it could be literally starting off as a chilly rain, 
as the temperatures plummet, it's still a rain, but it also, also it has a flash freeze. And that transition can easily swing further south. That includes North Texas getting into East Texas while you've got snow on the backside. I mean, look at these tight isobars. That tells you the winds are going to be cranking. And a 1056 Arctic high pressure. That's some serious cold heading your way across the middle part of the country. And it's going all the way to the deep south again. And looking at some of the latest model runs, I mean, this is probably the coldest run I've seen since February of 2021 folks yes this is a very intense cold air mass coming in from true Arctic air when you're seeing something of 40 and 50 degrees below average anomalies that is a very rare event and that does not happen that often and especially once once this system heads southbound there is nothing there is nothing to stop this continue to push further south and look at the overall wind chills this is going to be bone chilling cold everywhere you see in green will be below zero folks so we got negative wind chills all the way through the dakotas all the way down in oklahoma and and also including a good part of texas below zero folks feels like to the system you're definitely going to be feeling this in a big way with these single digit feels like feel, going all the way down in the southeast so you go through a huge transition you've got severe weather you're talking temperatures in the 70s and 80s and dew points in the 70s in a completely different air mass once we hit wednesday and thursday of next week we'll be pushing down into the teens again down here what feels like temperatures down back into the single digits this is what we're talking about the huge flip in the atmosphere and these are all these are actual temperatures that could unfold across a good part of the country especially the center part of the country because the arctic oscillation takes it you know beeline south so yes you get cold to the west and the east but the most most significant cold blast will be across in centered part of the central part of the u.s with single digit temperatures and a freeze reaching again all the way down into the texas coast the louisiana coast the mississippi coast yes the alabama coast yes we we've, we've seen it before with that with that system we're likely going to be seeing it again as you drop into the teens all the way down into the Texas coast. And that will likely bring some wintery precipitation to it. So obviously, whatever falls on the backside is going to take several days to melt because those temperatures aren't going to go nowhere. You're likely going to be below freezing for an extended period of time through Oklahoma, parts of Texas here, into Arkansas, Louisiana, back into Mississippi. We'll have another batch of freezing precipitation across the Carolinas again into North Carolina, Virginia, and back up here into the Mid-Atlantic as well into the northeast and here's your some snow on the blend this is your national blend that could likely unfold so it likely goes into a freezing rain setup with some snow on the backside reaching even further south with this system as easily the coldest air mass of the season so i will definitely be fine-tuning this setup uh going forward throughout the week into next week so guys i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch my next update why i protect you before and after the storm